Thank you very much and a very good afternoon to you all. Um, so yeah, as Mark said, I, I'm the co-founder of uh, an organization, a project called Headspace. Um, the other co-founders here today as well, that's Rich, who sat just there. So if you've got any questions afterwards, please feel free to come and ask us. Unfortunately, we're not around for very long today. Uh, we came down from London this morning. Um, I'm getting married next Saturday and have to be in church tomorrow morning to get the bands read, so we've got to go back this evening. So if you've got any questions, you'll have to ask them really quickly afterwards. Um, I thought there was a certain amount of irony, really, in coming to the do lectures to talk about not doing. Um, I'm on a mission, Headspace is on a mission, to get as many people as possible in the world to take 10 minutes out of their day to do nothing. Okay, so far we're up to, online, we're up to about 200,000. We'd love it if you get involved as well. Um, and you'll find us in lots of different places as well. I'll tell you a little bit more about that at the end. But I think the starting place is just to differentiate between doing nothing and not doing. And there is a difference between the two. So if you think about doing nothing, doing nothing is perhaps when you, when you wake up, you're not feeling particularly good. So you phone up the boss and you say, oh, I feel terrible today, I'm not coming in. You know, and then you lie there in bed and you feel a little bit anxious, maybe I shouldn't have done it, you feel a bit guilty. It takes a certain kind of effort to do that kind of not doing. Or maybe you're trying to clear a bit of space at the weekend. So you work really, really hard during the week. Maybe you put in 15, 16 hour days so that you have some free time to do nothing at the weekend. But by the time the weekend comes around, you're exhausted. And so there's a certain amount of stress involved in that as well. If you think about it, some people even go to the other side of the world to try and do nothing. And then what do you do? You lie on the beach and you think about work instead. You've been there, we've all been there. So this is a different kind of sort of doing nothing or not doing. This kind of not doing, I'd like you to think about it more in terms of a, a state of mind, a way of being, okay? Now you'd think it sounds like the easiest thing in the world, right? Not to do anything. But most people really, really struggle. As Mark said, I don't know, Mark, did you, when you tried meditation, was it that you tried it and you thought you couldn't do it, that you gave up? Or? I, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea where I was headed with okay. it. I needed some kind of tuition. Yeah. Anyone here who's tried meditation but given it up because they thought they couldn't do it? Okay, quite a few hands. As a general rule, I, it's this funny thing, right? Meditation, it comes with a huge amount of baggage. Uh, most people have a lot of preconceptions and often misconceptions about it. But when you approach it in the right way, it really is the simplest thing in the world. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a place of calm, of creativity, of clarity, and it's within reach of everybody. And we're talking about 10 minutes a day here. I'm not asking you to get on the floor and sit in lotus position and to sit there oming for an hour a day. It's nothing like that. It's really, really simple. So I'm gonna spend the next sort of 15 minutes or so just sort of explaining how you can approach this very simple act of doing nothing to get the most out of it. I'd like to start with uh, an animation. Has anyone been to the Headspace website before? A couple of you, a few of you, okay. Some of you might have seen a couple of these animations, probably not all of them. The first one's called Blue Sky, and I think it just really gives a flavor of what it is I'm talking about. Take a moment to think how it feels when you imagine a very clear blue sky. My guess is it feels pretty nice, right? All that space. But when you think about a sky which is very sort of cloudy and perhaps kind of a little dark, you don't naturally feel so good. Now, the strange thing is, even on a very cloudy day, the blue sky is still there, right? If you get in a plane and you fly up through the clouds, the sky's still blue. It's just that we forget, we get so kind of obsessed by the clouds, so fixated by the clouds, that we forget that there's actually still blue sky on the other side. This is a really useful analogy for meditation. Rather than trying to create a state of blue sky, a state of happiness and calm. It's more a question of sort of setting up a deck chair in the back garden, just sitting back and waiting for the clouds to pass. So it's uh, a funny thing, right? This, this state, for most people, when they sit down, they find it very difficult to relax. So they try to relax. But if you think about it, it's the antithesis of letting go, right? of relaxation, of trying to do something. So we're always kind of chasing after this state of relaxation, this state of happiness, under the illusion that it's somewhere else, and that we can kind of create it, attain it, or achieve it in some way. 
But actually, if we can learn just to step back, then we start to see the little bits of blue sky poking through. We get to experience a little bit of calm <laughs> and relaxation. Within 20 minutes, unfortunately, today, I don't have time to actually give you a taste of it. But I would recommend that you go on to the app, or it's free to use, or online, and just try it. So Mark will tell you all the information afterwards. Now, I'd like to get you to do a really quick exercise, because most people, when I talk about meditation, they say, oh, I'd be rubbish at that. I think too much. I'm too stressed to meditate. Okay, that's not a reason not to meditate. That's a reason to meditate, okay? What I'd like you to do is just to slowly start rubbing your stomach for me. You probably already know where this is going. Those of you who are challenged with coordination would already be shaking in terror. If with your other hand now, you could just gently pat yourself on the head. Okay. This is just for my own amusement, by the way. No particular reason. All right. Now, as you're doing that, try and keep it as even as you can. Nice, steady here, steady here. All right. Now, I'd just like you to start whispering for me your postcode, please. Just loud enough for you and the person next to you to hear. I'm taking all of these down as you say them. Okay, and as you're doing that, I'd just like you to imagine, visualize your front door at home for me. Please continue repeating the postcode, rubbing the stomach, patting the head. Okay, and you can stop. Thank you very much. And well done. Well done. You can give yourself a round of applause if you like. Uh, oh, well done. Okay. So, how many of you, over the last sort of 30 seconds, found yourself thinking about work? How many of you found yourself thinking little jobs you had to do at home? Okay. Wasn't a lot of room, right? Because you were focused on one thing. It wasn't that you sat down deliberately trying not to think of other things. It's that when you, simply, when you applied your mind, your attention, your focus to one thing, there wasn't really room for those other thoughts. So we're getting a little bit kind of closer to the idea of meditation here. The idea, it is not about sitting down trying to block out all the thoughts. Good luck to you if you try it that way. It's about sort of stepping back, focusing on something, but still allowing. So was there anyone here trying not to think? I guess it's probably not, right? You didn't have to try not to think. The same is true of meditation. You don't have to try not to think. There are a few kind of common questions and obstacles that I think come up for people. How many of you here kind of before today, in fact, I know you've already had a couple of talks, I think. Is that right, on meditation or on not doing? So you've probably already got a, a sense. But before you came along this weekend, how many of you thought that, that meditation was about kind of clearing your mind of thoughts, getting rid of thoughts? I mean, I would have thought kind of, if you've not come across <laughs> meditation before, for most people, that's the idea. But you'll know if you've ever sat down on a beach, on a sofa, in bed at night, just because you don't want to think doesn't mean that thoughts stop coming into your mind. So we need to find a way to work with the thoughts skillfully. And that's really where we're going next. It's this idea of, of mind with two very distinct aspects. Okay? Calm on the one hand and clarity on the other. Just out of interest, so I've got a rough idea. Who kind of leans more towards craving a little bit more calm in their life? Clarity? Both? And if there's anyone who has neither, then you should come up here and present instead. Um, uh, I think there's th these two aspects are, are really, really important. If we don't have a sense of calm, then it's impossible to have any clarity. I'll play this and then just talk a little bit more about it afterwards. Have you ever tried throwing a stone into a very still, clear pool of water? If you have, then you'll have noticed that as soon as the stone hits the surface, it creates sort of ripples on the surface. And as you keep doing that, so more and more ripples occur. And increasingly, the pond becomes very sort of cloudy. I think the mind's quite similar to this. You know, every sort of new thought has the potential to create this feeling of kind of disturbance or agitation in the body and mind doesn't have to but that's normally how it feels before we start to meditate 
But as you begin to meditate, as you learn to meditate, those ripples start to sort of calm down. You don't see quite so many. And when that happens, you start to get a bit more clarity. You get to actually look into the pool of water to see what's in there. It might not always be what you want to see or what you expect to see. In fact, sometimes you might see an old traffic cone or a shopping trolley, a shoe, something at the bottom which you don't especially like, but you need to be able to see these things in order to let go of them. And when you let go of them, life feels a little lighter. So I, I sometimes wonder if our, our sense of kind of doing, this constant sense of needing to be distracted, is perhaps a little bit us afraid of what might happen if we sit down and just do nothing at all. If we stop throwing those stones into the water, just allow the ripples to settle and start to see what's in our mind. And the interesting thing for me about meditation is that it doesn't really discriminate. Awareness doesn't discriminate. It's not that you necessarily finish your meditation laughing, swinging from the chandeliers. Maybe you do. But more often than not, it's just about being aware of how you feel. And the beauty of that is that not only is there a sense of calm with it, but you're then able to take that into your life, knowing how you feel and therefore working more skillfully, whether it's in relationships, whether it's within your working life, your social life, your personal life, whatever it might be. Hopefully kind of even getting rid of those different sections that we split life out into and just seeing it as life instead and having awareness, a sense of being present in the moment, the here and now, from moment to moment throughout the day. I think there's something very beautiful about that. There's an emotional stability that comes with it, which is extremely kind of liberating, I would say. Now... As I said, the, the expectation, I think, for many people is to sit down and just to, to assume the mind will be quiet. And how, how much time have we got? Ten. Ten. Okay. Um, I struggle to keep everything into 20 minutes, but I'll do my best. I want to share a really quick story with you, and it's a story about expectation. I think it's really useful to know. So this happened while I was a monk, but not at this particular monastery. And it was a guy who came along to a monastery. He was a lay person, and he came along to a monastery in the West. And he hadn't done any meditation before, and he assumed that it was just about kind of sitting down and following the breath. So he went into this sort of really big shrine room. There were lots of monks and nuns sort of sat down, and he didn't want to sit by the door at the back. It was a bit cold, so he went and sat in the middle of the, of the shrine room. And he sat down, and he was sort of he started off. The, the gong went at the minute, at the, the beginning, to mark the beginning of the hour. And he sat there and thought, okay, well, I'll just follow my breath. Okay, so he's following his breath, and his mind kept wandering off. So he started wondering, why does my mind keep wandering off? Oh, hang on, no, now I'm thinking about my mind wandering off. Oh, that's annoying. How can I get rid of that? Oh, this is starting to get really frustrating. Okay, and then he thought, and he thought, and thought. And over the space of an hour, his internal dialogue got so extreme, so kind of powerful, that in the end, he stood up, genuinely, he was cross-legged on the floor, he stood up in the middle of the hall and just said, I can't fucking do this anymore. <laughs> As the gong went for the end of the hour. Genuinely, this happened just like that, right? So you've got this guy who, he was just sitting there. All he had to do was not do anything. But internally, he was doing so much. And I think so often in life we do this. Something happens, the thing in itself is bad enough. We don't need to add to it. But we do. We take it on and we create stories out of it and we play the stories over and over again reinforcing the emotion that we feel and how difficult things are. So just as, a, as an idea, when you come to meditation, not to have too much expectation. Again, I think this sums it up nicely. So I think one of the best ways to understand the dynamics of the mind at play during meditation is to imagine yourself sat down on the edge of a very busy road. Now, before you start to meditate, it's a little bit like having a blindfold on. You're aware of all the sort of the background noise, the stress of the environment, but you're not really able to see what it is that's causing the stress. Now, when you start to meditate, it's like taking the blindfold off and all of a sudden you see much more clearly the thoughts and feelings in the mind. You get to understand why and how you feel the way you do. 
The temptation, of course, is to run out into the road and start trying to control the traffic, chasing after the sort of the pleasant thoughts, trying to stop the unpleasant thoughts. But that's really quite exhausting, you know, and that's why we tend to get stressed as often as we do. So meditation takes a slightly different approach. It's about holding your seat on the side of the road, getting used to allowing that autonomous flow of traffic to just come and go, the thoughts and the feelings of the mind. And when you do that, what you'll find is that the volume of traffic on the road starts to decrease and the space between the cars starts to increase. And that's the place of calm and clarity that feels so nice. such a different idea I think from the idea that most people have they have to sit there with a we're all trying to shut out all the thoughts we don't have to if we can just learn to sit on the side of the road allow thoughts and feelings to come and go if you think about it as long as we let it go it's gone it's only when we grab hold of it and try to make something out of it of course thinking is important we need to do it some thoughts are very creative very useful but when we get drawn in, when we get overwhelmed by them, then they become quite destructive and very unhelpful. So, thank you. So, it's really important that we come at it with just the right amount of effort and attention. Now, we're all, especially in this room today, we're all kind of doers, right? We like doing things. And generally, when we do things, we apply a lot of effort to make that happen. Now, if we come to meditation, again, with this idea of, right, I'm going to really do something here, then we're going to get really kind of stressed out. I'd just like to use this as, a, as an example. So if you think about this as an idea, if I, if I focus on you guys too much, then I can't focus on the balls, I'm going to drop the balls. The other way around, and there's no way I can talk to you guys at the same time. Now, when you sit down to meditate, some people sit down with this kind of attitude. Right, I'm really going to focus on the mind. I'm going to... Okay, they end up like this at the end of the 10 minutes. It's very uncomfortable. You'll recognize yourself if you get home from work like that at the end of the day. At the other end of the scale, there's the people who sit down and meditate like this, and it's kind of, eh, not really bothered. And they fall asleep during meditation. We need to be somewhere in the middle with a balance between the two. Now, what usually happens is we're sitting there, and... Something a little bit different kind of happens. Maybe an interesting thought passes us by. And we kind of see it in the corner of our eye, but it's different. We know it's different, but we're not sure what that difference is. So mentally, we go back there again, and it's kind of like, oh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, I was worried about work. Oh, God, yeah, I really must have. Oh, God, how did I ever let it get? Wow, I'm really anxious. I'm such an anxious person. And all of a sudden, we become this new kind of person. We've gone from this, which is a very, very comfortable kind of way of living, to this, which is quite a hectic way of life. If you think about it, we do this all the time anyway. If you think about the last time you had a, a wobbly tooth, an ulcer, you know it hurts, you know it's wobbly. And what do you do every 30 seconds? Oh yeah, that hurts, mm, that hurts, mm, that hurts. And you just create that storyline, you strengthen that storyline until that you become the storyline. It doesn't matter what your storyline is, whether you're really kind of bored with life and it's just become very monotonous, you just get up, go home, go to work, eat, sleep, whether it's like this, whether your pattern of mind is really, <sighs> and you're really anxious the whole time, or whether you've just got that nagging little doubt which just goes round and round and round your head, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what the storyline is. The beautiful thing about meditation is that it allows you to step back and see those thought patterns in a different way. When I first showed this to a young child who was about five years old, and he got really scared. And he hid behind his mum. And he said, Mummy, Mummy, that man's got three hands. <laughs> Clearly I don't, right? And I said, look, come and have a look. All, all that's happening. You know, there's this one over here. And then there's this one. He was like, oh, OK. And he came around and he started smiling. And he was, oh, do another one, do another one. The reality hadn't changed. I was still doing the same trick. It's just his experience of it was different. And I think that's the value of meditation. It doesn't mean that your life is going to change overnight, that you'll get rid of all of your problems. But what it does do is allow you a space, a framework in which you can sit down and see your life clearly. You can see your relationships clearly, your thoughts, your feelings. You create a space in which thoughts can begin to subside, in which you can let go of difficult 
feelings, baggage that you might have been carrying around for many, many years, actually. And at the end, life really does feel very much lighter. So just, I don't think we've got time for that one, but just as a, a finishing idea, that idea of blue sky. If you take away just one idea from this 20 minute talk, it would be that, the blue sky, that no matter how cloudy it appears some days, there is always blue sky on the other side. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>